maybe we can talk to him or something and find out. But you know, if it's if it's going to speed along his decision to yeah. speed along his decision to perhaps do something with it, that that would be great. My guess would be he won't do anything unless he can find a interesting He'd like to have his money back, and that's where the the treasury told me. Well, yeah, but I don't know what to give it to him, so. Yeah, we made a mistake. I mean, it was a, yeah, it was, that was a mistake. Yeah, it was a mistake, so. Anyway, I, I think we'll stop up and we'll look at those pictures that, that Laura has and stuff. You bet we packed all together, so we'll let it run. And I think the Lord does have the key. But it can just be a matter of pictures, because we won't be able to take him to court, because we're going to have to. Owner. Owner. How do we determine if we should put a sign up or not? Is that a police issue or is that a zoning issue or is it a It's a zoning issue. Is it a zoning issue or it's a council issue? You just have to serve it. I think I think if you look in the zoning book when we serve a property we if we feel it's a dangerous building to the point where it's dangerous to enter, we have to put a sign up. And we have a couple of signs. This is the one that you're in charge of enforcing. I haven't figured that out yet, but. And yet, instead, the enforcement officer shall cause to be posted at each entrance to such building a notice to read, do not enter, unsafe to occupy, the Tax City, Iowa. Such notice shall remain posted until the required repairs, demolition, or removal are completed. Such notice shall not be removed without written permission of the enforcement officer, or no person shall enter the building except for the purpose of making the required repairs or of demolishing the building. Then it says, in case the owner fails, neglects, or refuses to comply with the notice to repair, rehabilitate, or to demolish or remove the building or structure or party thereof, the council may order the owner of the building prosecuted as a violator of the provisions of this chapter and may order the enforcement officer to proceed with the work specified in such notice. The statement of the cost of such work shall be transmitted to the council. That's the council ordinance. It's chapter 145. I don't know if I have any more copies of that. Are you the enforcement officer? Yes. The zoning administrator is responsible for the enforcement of this chapter, it says. I don't have a problem putting a sign up. I think that's the council will, but maybe you better talk to Chamber or something. See if they, if they don't care, put it up. We probably should for our own liability, I suppose. I would think so. We can put it on agenda meeting, can't we, Madam, next week? I don't even think you have to. to me. Go ahead, no, we According can, to we that, can, the way it reads, they can put, they can put it up without council approval. The only question is, is this council approve moving? Council would have to move forward, approve moving forward on their own behalf to, re, to uh, resolve the nuisance. And that's when the council gets involved. The only way we can resolve the nuisance is go to Colin and see if we can serve these Winchells again and yeah. get them to court. Yeah. Which we already know. That's he sent us a letter that... Last week, I talked to her. Last, Collins told us. He said, "Leave with it a damn thing you can do." That's what Colin told me. I wish he would come and tell these people, though. Yeah. Do I feel like I'm not doing my oh, job? No, we I, understand it, but right. it's not going away. Right. The problem is still there, so we need to figure out. How I to wish I knew how to make it go away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. Selective tornado, right? Burn. <laughs> yeah. Selective burn. Yeah. The only way you can make it go away is the city demolish it. And evidently, their funds aren't available for that. It's on taxes, and we didn't know. No. The other two pieces of property that we had questions about before was the one north of the VFW, and that the is property. Yeah. Right, we'll do that one too. Pardon? Right. Just we'll do that one too. And yeah, that one is uh, taxes are paid. And that's the guy that, well, that was the Oak Elm partner that had paid the taxes. There are probably some coming delinquent now, mm -hmm. but it's that Leroy Anderson. That's the one where we called all find. over Iowa trying to find. He worked for a carnival company out of Anthony, Iowa. We talked to his sister, his sister-in-law, and nobody seems to know where he is. And that's the one the clerk of court told me if I find him, they're interested for child support recovery. So I've, I've been to the sheriff's office on him. Mm -hmm. I don't know where to go next. 
But that may be, I mean, there's quite a significant hole in that broken stuff, that, too. I mean, that's that probably is terrible, hole. too. The other one is sunlight, and my God, the weeds are almost knee high now, if not taller. And um, the, I did get a phone call from the EPA on that property, and he told me he would be out here the first couple of weeks of July. Now, he hasn't called me back, but I do have his email address, so I can see if he's coming in, and he said he'd talk about things. If he wanted to know where Ken was, so he could see <coughs> Ken, so. Well, I know the Wiley building, we can do some type of as hard as we looked for him and could not find him. You can do a public notice to him mm -hmm. in the newspaper, mm -hmm. and then it comes right back again. The city tears it down. And I think there's an interested party that will take it. Well, that's I what I thought. Mm -hmm. But at this point, the taxes aren't far enough along <coughs> for it to change hands. Aren't I correct? Yeah, but I wonder if you'd, according to the ordinance, if you could If we could find something. the guy, he would probably sign it over to whoever wanted it. He didn't pay taxes, did he? No, no all the partners paid the taxes on that. I don't think there is. That's crazy. I, well, <coughs> every time you talk to me, you get a different time limit, so I don't... Adam, Adam is, is there any way that the League of Cities the state of Iowa could help us out on these situations. This isn't the only one. We've, we've, this has been ongoing for years. And uh, I would think that they could uh, encourage legislation to, to help out with these situations. And we're not the only one like that's experiencing the gas tanks. Pardon me? It's like a fund for the gas tanks. Well, yeah, yeah but I mean, uh, to, to make some some laws that would govern some of these things. When these people buy these tax sales, they should. This is a great time to ask that question because I just got a notice from their uh, lobbying group asking us what issues they would like to see cities brought up. <laughs> so I will make sure it gets included in our report back to them on what we would. Appreciate we'd like to see more teeth in this because there is a small amount of money available for these type of things, but they always go to large projects. Well, and so you end up with there's not a whole lot of funds coming from the state to do these type of activities. But this this is one of the reasons why these cities belong to the municipal league, right. is to get help like this. This is and, a perfect. And we've meeting. done this before. I'll be happy to thank you so long. Appreciate that. You may ask them if there is is an ordinance out there that has more teeth in than what yours does too. Maybe there already is, it's already lawful to have a tougher ordinance. I don't know, but we can ask around the county too. I guess some of them have already torn down buildings. But I'll talk to Scott. See if he has what what they're using. Is call the, call Joan and Odebolt and call Sharon and Early. They're the two that go. They're like bulldogs. They go after this stuff and get it done. So they want them down. They're down. I'll talk. Are they paying for it themselves? So have it. The city pay the city of Odebolt paid seventy one thousand dollars in the last year to tear down four <laughs> great big two story buildings. One was in the sign lodge. I mean they were huge. And I think it cost twenty thousand dollars just to remove the asbestos from them. But the total was 71000 so they could get rid of them. And there's far significant buildings in this county that are coming down. Then this little thing on Main Street, the one north of VFW. Now, Sunrise is a different situation. But, <coughs> but it still has contamination. I will get a hold of them. Well, nothing's been removed, has it, from Sunrise? They, it's all gone? Well, I don't They pumped and pumped for weeks and all stuff out of there, right. and white suits, but I don't. And just last year, they went in and took more soil samples and did testing. Shirley's asked for a copy of those for what she needs to do. Mm -hmm. And so you uh, haven't gotten them? No. The guy told me he would be here sometime during the first couple of weeks in July, so I went and walked around it and took photos of how people can get into it on every side. And while I was there, there were like these glowing animals running in and out of the building. <laughs> <laughs>